So it's happening again, right? It's just like the effort to get Americans to realize just how great they have it. The media has joined with the White House to push shrinkflation as the author of household economic pain rather than the trillions of dollars that the White House dumped on the economy after the pandemic emergency was over. There was no economic emergency at the time. Uh, of course, it's good because you can, uh, from their perspective, you can brag about nominal economic gains and the ability to goose things like jobs numbers from all of the cash that's been sent to states that have been really creating a lot of the jobs that have made the difference. Uh, but really, uh, anyone who really understands or acknowledges in inflation, it's, you know, it understands that the, this free money thing has really been a death knell of what's happened. But it is an election season. So from the New York Times, uh, they put this out saying, uh, you know, listen, that inflation, if the shrinkflation causes inflation, so to speak. Now, of course, they don't mention input for producers, but just take a look at this. So the blue, uh, the blue is the normal price, right? Say, so, okay, this is up, was a dollar, now it's a dollar fifty, up fifty percent. But they say when you start to account for how the shrink, it's really up more. It's not up a dollar fifty, it's up a dollar seventy, so to speak. And they did that in a variety of categories from household cleaning goods, snacks, uh, candy, chewing gum, but also in coffee. Here's an interesting thing. That was from 1999 to last year. This are your coffee futures, right? This is what the futures of in coffee. So in that same time frame, that coffee prices went up 22%, accounting for shrinkflation, the price of coffee that the producers had to pay went up 102% from 96 to 196. So you gotta be kidding me. If anything, they took a loss. They've been taking a loss selling coffee. So this is the kind of thing you have to be on guard for, folks. By the way, there are three types of inflation. COVID gave us these two, cost push inflation, the rise due to supply disruption. We all know about the supply chain issues. Of course, it was a problem. Uh, then demand pull inflation. Price increases from excessive demand. Well, when you put trillions of dollars out there, too much money chasing too few goods. Now we're dealing with this one as well. Built-in inflation, inflation pressures that are persistent because of wage expectations. But here's the problem, it's not organic. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna show you in real life when you have these artificial wage hikes, particularly for, uh, minimum wage hikes. Kroger reported to earnings today, by the way, uh, the stores that didn't sell fuel were actually down eight-tenths of a percent. Here's the thing you have to look at, though, that's really amazing. Increased associate wages resulting in average hourly wages of $19 and a rate nearly $25 with benefits factored in, 33% increase, a 33% increase in the last five years. They've got to move those prices on. They just can't keep paying people this kind of money and not raise the price of things. This is incredible. This is what we talk about. So when you advocate for these extraordinarily high minimum wages, what you're really advocating for is higher prices, and you can't blame the food company for that. And by the way, talk about being a great corporate citizen. Look what Kroger is doing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is their the balance sheet. Let me, I want to show you some of the things they're doing. This is what the president should be talking about. Good corporate citizen. Uh, they gave away 182 million pounds of food. They gave this away, folks. Their charity, 1.3 billion for hunger relief. They're doing things for the climate. They're doing the things to stop wa wasting food. So this is the kind of company that will be villainized tonight. Villainized. <laughs> and so. It's so nuts to me. This is what we're built on as a nation. So the bottom line is, I know President Biden's no fan of the profit motive, and that's okay. But going to war with corporations is nuts. And by the way, Jay Powell sort of alluded to that today. He said, I think the price mechanism is incredibly important for our economy. I think we need to give companies the freedom to do that as long as they're not fixing prices or failing to disclose the nature of price changes to the public. All right, folks, uh, we are, we, we're going to continue with this because this State of the Union is huge. We're going to talk about these bad policies and now how they're impacting Main Street.